In the name of Almighty God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And welcome to our service today on this that we're keeping as the Feast of All Saints, which falls tomorrow. It's good to have you with us again. And let us start with our first hymn. Since we are surrounded by a cloud of great witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich you with God's grace, and nourish you with God's blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble, and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers, and absolve you from your offences, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now we sing the glory.
So let us pray. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age, and as we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adored for her husband. <clears throat> and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated at the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the word of the Lord. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a passage of Gospel that I refer to quite a lot, particularly at funerals. I'll often say at the beginning of the address that we are naturally sad and actually for those of us who are Christians, we hear in the gospel, and it's at this point, when Jesus heard the death of his friend Lazarus, Jesus wept. And if it's okay for Jesus to weep in the face of death, then it's okay for us to weep also. What I'm giving the congregation that's gathered there is permission to weep. And we all know that when someone is grieving, weeping is an important thing to do, holding it in. 
is something that doesn't do us any favours. The one thing that we've seen throughout this coronavirus pandemic is the impact on people's mental health. And it's because people don't have to talk to other people. They're not able to process stuff. People are working from home. People have a bad day. They have no one to talk to about it. And talking is very important. It's very important that we let these things out. And that can also include crying. People often see crying as a failure. But it is a natural reaction. It is something that we can do. And hopefully we all at times feel that we can cry. The other thing that we see in this gospel is we hear Jesus saying, unbind him and let him go. And actually, there are times where we might find that we are bound. Whether I will use the phrase sometimes, my hands are tied. Because there's something we want to do that we're unable to do. And sometimes we need to untie our hands to free us to be able to do things. Sometimes we have to let things go. It's important as we move forward in our lives that we work at what we have to let go, that we make sure that we're not bound, that our hands aren't tied, so we have that freedom. And however we find that freedom, it is important. It is important that we're free to go. People will sometimes try and keep things in, and there's a restriction, and there's a being bound, because they don't want to let emotions go. We often hear people, keep things to themselves. And it's often those people who are very quiet, very reserved, are the people that possibly end up doing something silly. Mary, at a time of need, came to Jesus. And we are always seeing people who will come to Jesus at a time of need. Whether it's someone is ill, whether it's someone has died, and they want that confidence of the hope of the resurrection. I see lots of things about the different types of funerals you can have. The one thing that a religious funeral offers you is the hope of the gospel. And sadly, a lot of clergy these days don't recognise that. I recognise it, it's not something I share at every funeral. Because there is something about being pastoral, and if that isn't right for people, then pastorally walking alongside them is important. But I recognise that that is an option. And I will often have that conversation with them, often in the house, if not at the funeral. I, this last week, did a funeral for a young lady who was only 17. I saw lots of people coming trying to make sense of why this 17-year-old had died. I had no answers. I addressed them and saying that the one question we all have is why? And it may be some time, if ever, before we get that answer. But what I saw was people crying, friends, family, crying and letting their grief out. It was a very emotionally charged funeral. But it was important that a lot of people had that opportunity to come together. I worked very hard to make sure that it happened in half term. So that those who had been at school with her, those who were at college with her, were able to be part of that. Because this collective coming together, this collective love... What Jesus does for Lazarus and for Mary, he does out of love. <coughs> I talked this week at this funeral about how this young lady had been born out of love. Her life had been surrounded by love. And today, as I spoke to them on that day, I said, we are surrounded by love. What the gospel message gives us is hope and love. 
But it also we have to look at sometimes about untying those things that bind us emotionally, if nothing else. And sometimes we have to let those things go. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, as we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord God, Jesus called us to love you and to love the people around us. Your love for us was total and unconditional. You ask us to come to you as we are, without airs and graces, with all our faults and failings. So we bring you ourselves and all those whose hopes and dreams we carry in our hearts. We pray for all church leaders, and we lovingly remember the challenge for us to take care of our beautiful world in its fragility. May church leaders' voices be heard in the coming climate conference so that wisdom and sensitivity will direct their thoughts, words and actions. Lord, in your mercy. We lovingly remember all those who are involved in climate change conference, which opens today as they debate plans and strategies. May they listen to each other and recognise the real needs of our world. Lord, in your mercy. We lovingly remember the children who bring laughter into our lives. May their joy be infectious and spread an epidemic of happiness to others. Lord, in your mercy. We lovingly remember for all those for whom life is a struggle with a few signs of hope. May they discover meaning, laughter, friendship and purpose through the support of the people around them. We pray for the sick particularly for Margaret, for Isabel, for Ken, for Pauline, for Phil, for Bill, for Robert, for Cheryl and Roseanne. Bring your healing presence to be with all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We lovingly remember that we will celebrate as we celebrate the feasts of all saints and also all souls this week. May we celebrate the lives of all those whom have lo known and loved, whose inspiration has made us better people. We pray for the recently departed, for Mary, for Chloe, for Trevor, for Zoe. Comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life and love, watch over, protect and bless us as we celebrate your love, which is so greater than we can possibly imagine. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of the God. Through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now let us sing our next hymn. Just 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. And now we give you thanks for the glorious pledge of the hope of, your, of our calling which you have given us in your saints, that following their example and strengthened by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance that race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Almighty God, on the night before Jesus died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. Jesus took the bread and thanked them. Jesus broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. 
Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. Jesus thanked you, gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, as we bring this bread and wine and remember Jesus' death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for Jesus' coming in glory. For we honour and praise belong to you, Almighty God, along with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. So let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven, mercifully grant that nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
So it's been good to join with you today, and I hope to join with you next week. Uh, if you keep up to date by liking the St. Joseph's page on Facebook, you'll know what's going on. If you have anyone you want to be praying for, either send me a message through Facebook or email me, and the email address will be up on the final screen. Uh, if I could ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, that would be great. So God, who has prepared for us a city with eternal foundations, give you grace to share the inheritance of the saints in glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and those whom you love, seen and unseen, now and forever. Amen. Strengthen us in the peace of Christ.